our guide for today carving up like <laughs> crazy. Look at this. <laughs> So obviously one of the main things that you can check out while you're in Berlin, uh, just areas where the, uh, some of the things that you can see in Berlin include actual erections of parts of the, the wall. Uh, you have a little bit of it right here. It's, uh, it's always so interesting to see some history when you come to cities like this. Obviously there's so much rich history here. Uh, the only thing is, <laughs> one top tip for any of you who might be traveling here, there are so many souvenir shops that like claim to have a tiny piece of the Berlin Wall that you can buy and then you know you have a, that's like your weird souvenir. Um, usually it's fake. <laughs> Don't fall for that trap. That's right, we're vlogging with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, the latest in a lineup of phones that are certainly more creator forward and thus probably better suited to someone like me and maybe not the general masses. After all, it shows it right here on the home screen. You have the Cinema Pro, Video Pro, even Music Pro applications on here that are supposed to mimic the same experience you might get on other Sony products like their ZV cameras. And you know what? They've always done a pretty good job of that, even if it means that these phones end up being pretty niche. So good a job, in fact, that I found myself not shooting with my Sony ZV E1 that I had on my hip because the phone was doing a pretty good enough job already. But before we get to all of that, let's head back to Spreewald in Germany, just outside of Berlin, where some tech friends and I decided to go and decompress after the craziness that was EFA travel. All right, here we are um, in the lovely little town of Spreewald. Looking up the article here on the Xperia 1 Mark V. And also, uh, as you can tell probably, a lot of what you're seeing in this video is taken using the cameras on the Xperia 1 Mark V. And I'm using a ZV-E1 right now to get this vloggy shot at the moment. Um, and you know what? The uh, Xperia 1 Mark V feels a lot like using a ZV-E1 just with... Uh, some obvious changes to the mobile photography side of things as far as the mechanics are concerned. I do have to give this camera some credit. Uh, the front-facing camera is capable of 4K video recording. Actually, hold on. Now it's doing 4K. <laughs> it was on 1080p in the previous one. Uh, but yeah, 4K on the front if you do want to use it for like the talky stuff and whatnot, but let's be real. What you actually should do instead of this, flip the phone around, use the ultra wide, even though there's no screen on the back, you can still frame yourself perfectly with the ultra wide. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to say though is that when I'm using the Video Pro application, which pretty much every video uh, coming from the phone should be through that app, I am using S Cinetone for mobile, that's the name that they use for it. Uh, I am going to go into post and probably bump up the saturation and contrast a little bit to just get it to look the way that I would want. Again, another content creators type of thing. Uh, not everyone is going to want to do that on a smartphone obviously, but that's kind of not the point of the Xperia 1 Mark V. With basically all other smartphones, uh, at some point there's a change when it comes to their phone designs, but Sony has kept things basically the same and simply updated the materials from time to time. But that also means that this Xperia 1 Mark V has pretty much everything that you might want from a smartphone, but you usually don't get elsewhere. Case in point, a headphone jack. This pulls double duty as a microphone jack as well if you're going to connect something like a wireless mic pack or a shotgun mic when rigging up the phone. It's a clear sign that the phone is better suited to creators who are looking for a reliable kit and know their way around to Sony camera, and likely those who know their way around getting a proper shooting scenario already. Another thing that this phone has that plenty of others do not, extra buttons, in particular one for hitting the camera shutter. I've always been appreciative of this because you get straight to the camera app with a hold and then you can run and gun with the button just taking pictures all willy nilly. It's in this run and gun situation that you'll probably rely on auto modes and good autofocus. So it's good that a point and shoot experience is still available on here, even though Sony is clearly still all about providing the various other settings when you want to get real sweaty with your photos and your footage. Apparently one of the uh, main foods in Spreewald is uh, gherkins. And I, I remember what that word is, but I just blanked on it, uh, pickles. There's so many different types of pickles that you can get here. Uh, so we're probably gonna end up trying some. Uh, but for now, let's talk about the experience of using the Xperia 1 Mark V. 
I have to give a lot of credit. Every single time I use an Xperia device, it just makes me, encourages me to try harder with my videos and my photos. Uh, it does mean that you're getting into the settings more. Maybe the actual mechanics and the operation of using the camera is more complicated, but it's the same deal then uh, for content creators uh, because we do that with all of our cameras all the time. So it just kind of feels very natural for me to actually get into the weeds with it. Is it the easiest experience on an Xperia? Not really, but that's something that I've grown used to over the last couple of generations of using them on trips like this. Again, front-facing camera, not my favorite, but that's okay. Not too spicy. Not spicy. There's a little bit of... It's the tiniest kick, but you know me. I want, I want, I want it to kill me. <laughs> but other than that, it's all pretty much the same, which is to say that it's a showcase of all the premium features that Sony brings to the smartphone game. This boxy design holds a great OLED display that sports high refresh rate at almost 4K resolution. The fairly minimal, if you don't count the Pro Creator apps, Android interface is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and the battery life is pretty good provided you're not shooting at HDR or a log or 4K 120 all the time given the 5000 mAh battery. It goes without saying, if you followed Sony flagships for the last couple of years, you know what you're getting before we even dive into the camera enhancements. Speaking of that battery, it is charged up using either wireless or 30 watt wire charging, so why not pair the phone with a great charging solution from the sponsor of this video, Ugreen. Their Nexode lineup of chargers provides a lot of choice in terms of charging just about any kind of gadget, and the Nexode 300 watt GAN charger is one of the best ways of getting everything charged up even all at once. Five devices, four via USB-C and one via USB-A, can be charged all at the same time with the power of Gantec and PD 3.1. Obviously, smartphones will charge at full speed as a result of this station, but if you want to charge something even more robust, like a laptop, these top three ports can go at high speeds even when all of them are being used at the same time. Check this out. The smartphone is charging in the fourth port at 20 watts. The laptop above it is going at 45 watts. The next one up is going at 65 watts. And then the top port is still pumping out 140 watt output. That is still enough for most laptops, even gaming laptops, so that you have plenty of power even when everything is being used at once. The Ugreen Nexo 300 watt charger is the perfect solution for all of my gadgets, especially when I get into the office and I realize multiple of my items need a top up or are just totally dead. You also don't have to worry about things heating up or anything like that because of Ugreen's Thermal Guard, which is a temperature check that runs 6,000 times each minute to make sure the station is running cool and out of danger. And finally, making the switch to GAN charging, GAN Tech, is just one that you and the environment can both benefit from. Fast charging speed means less time being plugged in, but GAN technology is also better to make than legacy charging solutions, and it all helps to reduce emissions and to help the environment. It's certainly one of the best charging solutions I have, and all of my powerful gadgets get the power they need all at once. Check out the Ugreen Nexo 300 watt GAN charger, sporting a dedicated 140 watt USB-C port via the links in the description and in the pinned comment below. And you can also check out all of the other Ugreen Nexo charging solutions as well. Thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to it. So, so far, like the biggest endorsement that I can make for this phone, and I've done it with other Xperia's, especially most recent ones, I actually feel really comfortable just using what I get out of the phone as the main footage for videos like this. Uh, the hardware is just really great. The processing is not too crazy so that it actually looks like natural video. Um, and in a good lighting situation like this, using the Xperia phone, yeah, I'm able to vlog pretty well with it and to get some good shots with it. Especially since you have the zoom on there, which is just something that you want to use for more dramatic looking shots. But I haven't moved yet, I'm already enjoying this. <laughs> just sitting by the murky water. And every now and then a duck comes by. Best day ever. I was gonna say, it's the proximity to the ducks. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> The love of gherkins in this town. <laughs> it's both hilarious and awesome.
Let me give a quick thought about what you're seeing coming out of this camera in this video. It was a lovely day out in Spreewald where the sun was beaming down quite hard, so that means the scenario was about as ideal as you would want. That said, I kept things pretty simple. Here in the Video Pro app, I had everything at uh, 24 frames per second at 4K resolution with the high stabilization, which means there was a little bit of a crop. And as far as everything else is concerned, I did leave things for the most part on auto, only really changing up the exposure levels using this slider right here. And for all the pictures that you're seeing, I kept everything at program mode, program auto in this case, uh, which already governs the shutter speed. And then I can change up other things like the ISO, but I even left that on auto. And again, I just used an easy exposure slider right here, usually to dial things down because, well, with the bright conditions, things were coming in a little too hot for this particular sensor. So basically in both scenarios, I was doing like one dial shooting for the most part. That's basically how we shoot with typical smartphone cameras anyway, only here it's done in a more classic camera mode style. And I may have already mentioned it in the vlog portion earlier, but I also shot all of the video using s Cinetone for mobile. That's exactly what it's called here in the interface. I like to dial in my settings in camera usually, which means on my Sony cameras, I use the s Cinetone picture profile, and then I dial up the saturation and the contrast a little bit. But for the purposes of this video, I did have to do those adjustments in DaVinci Resolve across all of the footage in post. The hunters? Oh, <laughs> I got a big one. Mm. Pickles. Gherkins, I mean. Gherkins. One in Berlin. But I think you're right. They're like Go to Spreewald. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, speaking of those interfaces, check this out. Sony finally listened. All of the elements can now be viewed vertically, both in the Photo Pro and in the Video Pro applications. If we go like that, everything changes up. So if you are really into the short form vertical content, well, it's more comfortable to do now with this phone. I think it's good that we have all of these options because Sony is making sure that the hardware is keeping up with them. I didn't talk about it much, but the main sensor is now a 48 megapixel stacked sensor. And I didn't talk about it much, but you can see what the quality is like from photos and videos, crisp and detailed across the board. 4K 120 is possible across the rear cameras, which I have used on the previous generation phone quite a bit. Another thing that I always appreciate with these cameras is that the various lenses provide the proper focal lengths that a shooter might want, from an optical 16 millimeter ultra wide to an optical 85 to 125 millimeter via the variable optical lens, which is something we saw last year and it's still good to see. Clearly I had a great time in Spreewald. Shouts out to the friends who were on that little road trip. Nick Gray of Fandroid, Chris Carlin and his family. It was also a great time shooting everything mainly with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. It's got the chops, even if you have to put a lot of elbow grease into everything to achieve it. From the interface, that gives you an almost dizzying array of tools and settings to the work I put in post in order to achieve the look that I wanted, the phone is clearly a creator's tool and it might not be for everyone. But Sony is clearly confident in what they're putting out there for creators, and they have done another good job with the Xperia 1 Mark V. Real quick, one more shout out to the sponsor of this video, Ugreen, and their Nexo charging stations, including the powerful 300 watt station. Once again, check them out in the description and in the pinned comment below. But from there, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today and watching this little vlog of a random day I had with my friends. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody. Coffee today, but... We have a lot of work to do, so need that boost.